Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I've got this uh, Freon detector. It is a Snap-on ACT 5500. I got this one really cheap because it's broke. Um, so it just doesn't power on. Um, I've checked the batteries, you know, with my multi-tester, and um, I've tried different batteries. Their batteries are good. Uh, but it just does not power on when you turn the power on. So we'll pop her open, take a look and see if we can fix her. This is a really nice tool. If I could fix it, that'd be awesome. Give me something else to have in my arsenal to fix things. So there's that. And this looks like this was probably hand assembled. That's yeah, not machine assembled. Interesting. So there's actually a little transformer in here too. That's interesting. What we gotta do to get all this up out of here? Hmm. Oh, it's got little melted plastic pieces that hold up more in there. Pop those loose. And there's one more right here. There. So, I mean, these power wires go up here, and I see. Hey, look, I got a little broken wire right there. Check that out. That should be a pretty easy fix. It's just gotten corroded back in here. I'm just going to solder my black wire right back on there. Okay, I've cleaned this connector off really good. And um, I've got my solder and iron out. This is my little cheapy car one that I keep out here in the garage. I've stripped some wire back on this. This wire is really cheap aluminum wire. It's not copper. And it's really oxidized. We'll see if we can get her to take some solder. I might have to go get some flux. See, I'm not taking the solder. Uh, let me cut her back a little farther and see if I can find some good stuff in here. Hmm, hang on, let me see what I can do here. Okay, so what I've done is went and got some really good soldering flux here this is the uh, MG chemicals stuff we'll put a little bit of that on here okay and then what we're going to do, get this old Peltier cooler, going to steal me a piece of wire off of it. Let's strip the end of that there. And we'll do a little flux on that guy too. And then I'll tin him up. Okay, so that's tinned up. I'm going to see if I can tend this guy up with some good flux. Come on, baby. Take some solder. Mm. 
if, even with some solder and some flux, that guy is just not going to solder. Okay, a lot of times when this kind of thing happens, we're just going to leave that connector well enough alone. And put it back together. Now I'm going to take a look at this board. We'll unplug this probe connector here. And let's figure out where that ground goes. I can probably find a spot on this board to tap in for the ground and just solder a wire right to the board. So, I'll be back. Okay, so I found me a good spot here right on this main switch. Luckily, this thing is uh, switched on the ground side for the power. So I can just go right to this main switch, hook up my ground wire. Most things are switched on the ground side, and people are like, oh, I don't understand why they do that. It's because electrons flow from negative to positive. All right, I think that is a nice, good, solid uh, a jumper on the board there. And now what I'll do is just verify that this isn't shorted or anything. I'll strip this out if I can. <laughs> there. Okay, now I will take my jumpers, which are set for continuity. I'm going to check this third pin right here is ground. It's also wired in common with the speaker ground, I think. Maybe not. No. And so, that I found come through there. Make sure we're not jumped onto that other resistor there. Although that could be a ground side for that resistor. It's not. It looks like we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this wire onto here now. And then we should be set. All I do is go ahead and I'm just going to put a little of this good plugs down here. And we're just going to melt that down. Put that solder a little bit that's on there. Freshen her up with a little silver bearing solder. And we can. Okay. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to tin this wire here. Let me put a little flex on it. And then we'll put that down there. I'll hit it with the iron. There we go. Then I can go ahead and put this connector back on. Now I'll go ahead and put this connector back on. Okay. And these wires have to run up around there. This all kind of flips over. There is a doohicker here somewhere. Alright. There's a switch. And what I've got is my hot glue gun. And I'm just going to take where these little plastic things were melted over before. I'm just going to put a little drop of hot glue on them. Now I'm going to have to put my battery back in here. 
I'll hit the on button. Doesn't seem to have any power. Hmm. Okay, well, more troubleshooting. Okay, that was simple enough. This battery tested with like 1.4 volts. As soon as it went under load, it sagged to like 0.3. So I have one bad battery. I put these two batteries in it, fired it up, shocked the hell out of myself, and it worked. So you gotta be careful when you see a transformer on a circuit this way. I should have known better. There's usually a uh, chip, an amp, and then that chip's oscillating that voltage back and forth so that it's AC and the transformer steps that voltage up. Ooh, it steps it up pretty high. I'd say about 300 volts. <clears throat> Luckily, not a lot of current there. But yeah, my hand's still tingly. So I'm going to put her back together here on some, once more. I should have just tried a different battery before I took it all back apart again. But uh, that's okay. You know, that's got a piece of plastic stuck in it. Get that out of there. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, good enough. So now, I'll do this to show you that it works. I have to be careful not to shock the crap out of myself again. So these are originally designed for R12. Uh, however, they work with any halogen-based molecule. I think like R152 is what they use in duster. I mean, just barely anything coming out of that end. It's real sensitive. It's a good one. Alright. How about that for $10? I'm going to take the batteries out while I reassemble it just in case. Since I shocked myself once. But we now have a good little Snap-on 5500 Freon tester. That will come in handy. Troubleshooting the AC on the Pontiac. This is Tom, Frequent Prepper. A little knowledge, a little multimeter, some soldering tools. You'd be surprised what you can get for cheap and fix. I'll talk to y'all later.